Welcome to the Housing Hour with Kevin Ray, a locally produced program devoted to bringing you a fresh perspective on housing, diving into the issues that matter most. The Housing Hour with Kevin Ray is presented by Mortgage Investors Group. Now, Kevin Ray. Welcome into the Housing Hour. This is Kevin Ray, your host. Thank you for joining us here on this Saturday morning. We want to thank all of the, all of our listeners who have, uh, of course, continued the transition over to our show here at WOKI. We're extremely excited, and, and everything is going great. The people here are excellent, and uh, we're just so thankful that everybody has has transitioned with us. So today we are tackling some some very important issues, and as you all know, also you can go to thehousinghour.com. Um, you can listen to our show live there. You can also listen to our archive shows there. And we also have some very important series that we have done. And I think that, Mark, you could probably speak to that more because we want people, we have new listeners. I know this for a fact, that we're going to have some new listeners coming aboard. And we want to make sure we we explain the site to them. And I want you to, to tackle that. Tell me a little bit about the site. Yes, yeah, so I'm Mark Griffith. I'm mm-hmm. the co-host. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's great to be here on WOKI. It's very exciting. We're uh, just absolutely thrilled. TheHousingHour.com is going to be your source to, for all the information. We've got just a ton of resources there to help all of our customers and all of our listeners from a year's past worth of uh, in interviews that we've done. We've got series for the Protect Your Family series, mm-hmm. Home Ownership Matter series. We've just got energy efficiency. That's our big one, too. Mm-hmm. So please check that out. Absolutely. And another thing I do want to point people to that – for instance, our guest today, we have Jack Feldman here. He is a home inspector, um, Clayton Inspection Services. Did I get that correct, Jack? It's Clayton Inspection Service. Service, okay. Drop the S. And it's right there on your shirt, too, which is helpful. <laughs> it's right there on my <laughs> shirt. Real. But, but and- Jack, you know, he's our resident home inspector. He's our home inspector, um, uh, basically our engineer of all things home inspections. So he has come in in the past. And I want to direct people to the website so that they understand how this works. Um, for instance, if you have a show that you want to listen to, maybe a topic that you know that we've covered in the past, you can just simply go to thehousinghour.com and under the search menu, you can search any topic or any name. So you could type in Jack Feldman. He's been on our show before and we had rave reviews about Jack's last show. And I know this one is going to be even better. So. We're going to continue on this series. And, and Jack, you know, one of the things before we get into what we have, which is the top 10 most ridiculous home inspection photos in the history of home inspection photos. Before we get to that, um, you know, well, let's unpack for everyone what it is that you do. Because when you purchase a home or, you know, any time that even if you're building a home, we always recommend at Mortgage Investors Group and in any line of work that has to do with real estate, someone to have a home inspection. First, I mean, why would somebody, why should somebody have a home inspection? Well, to cut down on surprises. Yes. No one likes surprises. They can mm-hmm. be very costly. So a home inspection, either when you're buying a home or when you're selling a home, can turn up surprises deficiencies or defects or something wrong in the house Mm -hmm. and deficiencies could even be that the builder that built the home did not adequately finish work that one of his contractors had done and may not have been dealt with that's another example i would say yes the 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 best builder in the world is only as good as his worst sub right (laughs) but but, you know and most people don't think about getting a home inspection on a new home right it's always existing right but really jack don't you recommend even on new construction before you move in that you they use your services oh absolutely i i found things on brand new construction that was ready to be turned over to the new buyer that were life-threatening and we've got a picture of that (laughs) yeah we do as, as a matter of fact I mean, people are out there buying homes and people are out there building homes. And that that's the thing that people need to think about when, you know, if you look at home sales, they're up. I mean, there's no mistaking. Oh, they jumped this they, week. They too. jumped this week. And, and not only that, but you look at home values, they're increasing as well. Absolutely. So so the market is really primed, I think, for this spring um, that you're just going to be covered up. And so people that are out there listening or if you're listening to the archive show or whatever – 
your friends or family are talking about, you know, purchasing a home, a home inspection as is as important, if not more important, I think, than an appraisal. Because you're appraising the value of your home, but then that's what a home inspection is, is appraising the is appraising the condition of your home. And that's a good point because, Jack, tell us the difference between Because a lot of people think when an appraiser goes in, he really kind of does what the job of a home inspector does. And yeah, that's really that's not false. true. So kind of tell us just briefly the difference. Sure. The, the appraiser is there to tell you the value. They look at the neighborhood. They look at the home, how many bathrooms. And they walk through the home just like I walk through a home, except for I'm looking for problems they're looking at uh, value, mm-hmm. marketable, marketable deficiencies. I mean, yes. they're going to look at extreme cases of safety, but that's about it. Right. They may call out uh, a gutter's disconnected from the roof, mm-hmm. but they're not crawling under the house to see if there's plumbing leaks. No. They're not going up in the attic to see if there's no insulation possibly. Right. Or a nest. We'll or talk, a nest. We'll <laughs> talk about <laughs> that yes. later. Um, well, that now another question is because there's a lot of home inspectors out there. Just like there's a lot of people that are doing mortgages. For instance, if you go with, I'm not going to name a bank, but ABC Bank, their individual loan officers are not actually licensed. In other words, they haven't had the education that a licensed lender like us at Mortgage Investors Group are. Why um, is it important to, for people that are choosing a home inspector to make sure that they have the appropriate, not only the licensing, but also the continuing education and also the little club that you're in. Uh, not club, but what, <laughs> what, tell me what that is. Okay, you're referring to uh, ASHI, ASHI. Yeah, or ASHI. the American Society of Home Inspectors. Yes. Um, oldest professional home inspector organization in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, to become a member of ASHI, I had to do 250 inspections, have those reports verified that they met the standards of practice, and pass a, a written test. The, it's the same test that we had to pass to get licensed by the state of Tennessee. Uh, the difference is, is that for ASHI, I have to have 20 hours of continuing education per year. Mm. For the state license, I'm only required to have 16 hours. Oh, okay. So, so essentially, I have to have 20 hours a year regardless. Oh, that's and that's important because we also have to have continuing education as well. And it's so important. I mean, I just took my you know my renewal thing, I guess, a couple of months ago. And a lot of the stuff was great refreshers, things that I'm going to be faced with throughout the year. And so those are things also. But also the camaraderie that you guys build within ASHI and be able to, you know, kind of compare notes on new issues and resolving new issues and things like that helps as well. Yes, we we have quarterly chapter meetings and we get together in East Tennessee and it's a a good referral base where you have confidence in your uh, peers. So if I get sick, I can refer someone and I can trust that they're going to do a a good a job as I do. That's good. Well, and and that happens frequently because you're not going to travel to necessarily Chattanooga possibly would you travel to Chattanooga to do a job or would you refer no. to a trusted friend I I refer colleague. I I refer to uh, colleagues all over the country mm-hmm. because being an ASHI and and serving on national committees I know inspectors all over the country mm-hmm. and uh, if someone calls me and they they need an inspector in Texas I know someone in Texas That's good to know Mark because you know if you have a friend or family member that you know, they, you know, some people just don't tackle those type of issues. They could say, well, you could still call Jack. Jack could, even though your aunt is in Illinois, Jack can still help locate somebody that is trusted, that is ASHI certified. I think that's very important. And most businesses rely on referral networks. I mean, that's right. a big source of uh, way people uh, get the word out. Absolutely. Jack, why don't you tell everybody your contact information yes. and, and phone number? Sure. The office phone number is 865 865- Six nine three seven one zero nine. My email is Jack at Clayton Inspections with an S dot com, and the website is Clayton Inspection dot com. Clayton Inspections dot com. Okay, with the S. with an S. Yes. And there's a great picture of you. Um, on a porch testing something. Very attractive want. guy, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> also, tell him your Facebook page because this is where you have a ton of information and the and some photos. Yes, I uh, my Facebook page is also Clayton Inspections. Um, so it's Facebook dot com slash Clayton Inspections. Is that what it is? 
Uh, you, you've caught me off guard. It, That's okay. Uh, it, 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 it's either Clayton Inspection Service or Clayton Inspections. Well, what we'll do is we'll put the actual site to make sure everybody has it. We'll link that to our Facebook yeah, page. Link. So we'll make sure that we get that on there. But then why don't we go ahead, because I'm so excited to yeah. talk about it. Let's talk about the top 10 most ridiculous home inspection pictures. And while you're listening, you can you can follow along with us right now on thehousinghour.com. It's right there for you. There's a link there, it's right there on the front page on, on the, the housing front page. Yeah. We're going to have it right there. So all you have to do is just simply go right now and look. And so the first thing, and you know, you, you've you been taking pictures and, and doing this for a long time. So, you know, you mentioned off air to me that you have a lot of pictures that maybe have, have been lost or they were, you know, thrown away or whatever. Um, but these are just your more current ones, correct? Well, that's right. When when I started inspecting in, in 1989, uh, we didn't use cameras. Mm-hmm. And then I started using Polaroids. And then I went to 35 millimeter with one hour photo. <laughs> yeah. Um, which were never, is never one hour. And then finally got a digital camera. And so I have, I have thousands of slides and 35 millimeter photos that are outrageous and I haven't converted them to digital. Oh, please convert those because we could have a whole show on this. Um, well, let's start. The first one is number 10 is going to be, and, and I'll let you speak about it, but it's the Federal Pacific uh, box that you, it's it's notorious for being the thing that could most damage a potential homeowner. Um, talk about, because this picture, it, it looks like something out of... It looks like my grandfather's house, yes, his electrical panel. Absolutely. It's, it's just saying, hey, electrical fire, electrical fire. Why is this such a, a bad thing to have in your house? Well, this particular photo is like the trifecta. Mm-hmm. It's not only the, the Federal Pacific uh, stab lock panel, but it has aluminum wiring. Ah, uh, and besides double aluminum, doozy. Yeah, and besides the aluminum wiring, the conductors on the breakers are rusted. Oh, yes. But uh, Federal Pacific, I'll, I'll just touch on that, is they were a panel that were in the 70s and 80s, and... They had a nasty habit of a breaker tripping, but not actually cutting off the power. Mm. Mm. So then it turns it into you know, an arc welder, <laughs> right? Or they melt and I they think caught you said on that fire. Last time. Yeah. <laughs> well, they they had a nasty habit of uh, melting and catching on fire. Yes. And panel catches on fire in the side of a house. The house usually catches on fire. Mm-hmm. Well, this one in particular has aluminum wiring. Aluminum wiring, a solid conductor, was used during the Vietnam era when there was a copper shortage. Mm -hmm. It's no longer allowed to be used. And it's no longer allowed to be used because there's uh, heat expansion and contraction, loose connections, sparking, arcing, and again, fires. But when it trips, it's not tripping correctly. That. That's the breaker. Yeah. Uh, which, Which then is the arc welder scenario. Yes. And with aluminum wiring, many times the outlet or switch that you go down to Home Depot or Lowe's to buy aren't rated for aluminum wiring. So then it's unsafe to connect that wire to that outlet or that switch. Now, when you see something like this, is it your um, job or are you in a position? Because this this probably wouldn't pass you know, any type of inspection it, from a county livability standpoint. Uh, that's not the proper term, but... I mean, can you turn stuff like this in? Because this this could this could actually kill somebody. Well, the the short answer is no. I can't turn it in. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm required by our standards of practice to report on any condition where there's solid conductor aluminum wiring. Mm-hmm. It's that serious in the home inspector industry. Wow! wow. So aluminum wiring is uh, quite quite serious. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Federal Pacific Panel, while there there are maybe a handful of people that think that's a perfectly fine panel mm-hmm. it's pretty much recognized that it's it's a bad panel well we are going to get to nine through one when we come back um from break but we're excited to have jack feldman here clayton inspection services we are so excited about this top 10 uh most ridiculous home inspection pictures and i'm excited for you guys to see them um thank you all for joining us and we are going to have a great show uh the rest of the way come back and join us right here on woki Hi, 
I'm Brantley Rivers with Acme Block and Brick. It's cold outside and an outdoor living space is the last thing on your mind. But it's actually the perfect time to start planning for the future. At Acme Block and Brick, our helpful staff will show you the many different ways you can enjoy your outdoor living space year-round. Let's say you use your pre-existing outdoor kitchen in the spring and summer. How about adding a fire pit to enjoy those cool nights with friends and family? Maybe you don't have an outdoor living space. Let Acme Block and Brick show you the many different options that can transform your backyard into a place that the entire family can enjoy every season. Acme Block and Brick carries the highest quality products, like our Bell Guard pavers, so you know you are getting a product that will last and last. And with the many different colors and textures, you will be sure to find the perfect fit for your style and taste. Don't let the cold weather keep you inside all winter. An outdoor living space is what you need. So see what a little stone can do and visit one of our three locations in Crossville, Kingston, and in Alcoa. Acme Block and Brick. Online, it's acmeblockandbrick.com. Spring is just around the corner. Temperature begins to warm. Plants start to bloom. And truthfully, what's more fun than planting a garden with your family and letting your kids pick out the flowers? Mortgage Investors Group wants to help you make these precious memories come true for you. Whether it's a purchase or a refinance, we have the loan to fit your needs. So call us today, 800-489-8910, or visit us online at mortgageinvestorsgroup.com. Mortgage Investors Group, your home loan solution for the past 23 years. Tennessee Mortgage License Number 109111. If you need to lose weight and would like to get paid to do so, that's right. I said get paid to lose weight. Just listen to the following announcement. The makers of Extreme Green Coffee Weight Loss are looking for real testimonials from real people and will pay you per pound to meet or exceed your weight loss goal. Until now, the secrets of green coffee's fat-burning power has been limited. But thanks to a prominent TV talk show doctor featuring the green coffee bean as a miracle fat burner, the secret is out. And now Extreme Green Coffee is available in convenient, easy-to-take drops. There are no expensive meals to buy or stress strenuous workouts to commit to. Simply take extreme green coffee bean before each meal and record your progress. Only the first 200 callers are guaranteed to be accepted into the program. So if you're serious about losing extra weight and want to earn extra money for fitting into your skinny jeans again, call now. Call 888-965-1580. Space is limited, so hurry and secure your spot today. 888-965-1580. Some conditions apply. 888-965-1580. 888-965-1580. At Title Associates of Knoxville, we are all about you. You, the buyer, the seller, the real estate agent, or the lender. Hi, I'm Sue Benson, owner of Title Associates. In today's real estate market, it is more important than ever to have a title company with experience, a company you can trust, and one that conducts business with you in mind. Our staff has been serving Knoxville and surrounding counties for over 20 years with timely, attentive service. We are constantly updating and re-educating ourselves to ensure the best possible service to our customers. At Title Associates, we are proud to be a part of this community, a community that has remained positive during the downturn of the economy and a community that will recover with an even stronger real estate market. If you're buying, selling, or refinancing, our staff promises to make your closing a pleasant one. If you're a real estate agent looking for excellent customer service, give us a call 777-1040 or visit our website at tanox.com. We are all about you. Title Associates, your choice and the right choice. Spring is just around the corner. Temperature begins to warm. Plants start to bloom. And truthfully, what's more fun than planting a garden with your family and letting your kids pick out the flowers? Mortgage Investors Group wants to help you make these precious memories come true for you. Whether it's a purchase or a refinance, we have the loan to fit your needs. So call us today, 800-489-8910, or visit us online at mortgageinvestorsgroup.com. Mortgage Investors Group, your home loan solution for the past 23 years. Tennessee Mortgage License Number 109111. Hey, this is Halloran. Do facts matter? What the Grammy winners tell us about America... Chris Christie is not too fat to be president. And should you be paid overtime if your boss calls you when you're off work? Have a great weekend. We start Monday morning at 5.30, the Halloran Hilton Hill Morning Show. Bring your own brain. Think out loud. Have some fun. News Talk 98.7 WOKI. The Housing Hour with Kevin Ray continues, helping you understand what is really going on out there and what to do about it. Again, Kevin Ray. Welcome back into the Housing Hour. This is Kevin Ray, your host, and I'm here with our co-host, Mark Griffith. And we want to thank Mortgage Investors Group for always supporting this show and really helping create the vision for this show. Um, we're very thankful for them. And, and we're also thankful, 
thankful for our sponsors as well, which I want to tell you about one right now. It's um, Admiral Title. Admiral Title um, has been sponsoring this show since its inception, um, but they also have been partners with us uh, for a long time. They've, they've been in business for eight years, and I know that we all um, look for people we can trust, partners in the real estate business that we can really trust and, and feel like we can um, – Give them the the work and know that they're going to take care of our clients 100% of the time. And that's the way I feel about Jack Feldman at Clayton Inspection Service. That's how I feel about, you know, different people in different parts of the real estate. Bobby is another one of those people um, as well. But Phyllis has been in the mortgage business for several years. And, and now she's she's developed this company. And so if you're a lender out there, maybe you're a real estate agent, and you want to develop a partnership with a trusted advisor in the real estate title business, then Admiral Title would be the place for you. Give them a call today, 865-531-6060. It is Phyllis, you see who you want to ask for, Admiral Title. So we're back in here into the housing hour, and we have Jack Feldman here, and we're talking about home inspections, but we're talking specifically about uh, our top 10 most ridiculous home inspection pictures. Egregious. I mean, some of these, I'll tell you what. And, you know, we had to actually cut some of them out because of we just have 10. <laughs> so we might, if we have time, we'd like to talk about them. But um, anyway, we were talking number 10, and you can follow along on thehousinghour.com. You can go right there right now and, and view exactly what it is that we're looking at. And then also... Um, as well, as we go down the list, if you wanted to, you know, maybe tweet some of the pictures out, if you wanted to, you know, discuss them, we'd be happy to try to get Jack uh, involved in that as well. And you can follow us on Twitter. It's The Housing Hour. So that's what our Twitter feed is. Um, and of course, we're on, we're on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash housing hour. And you can find all of that on thehousinghour.com. So let's go to number nine. Number nine. And I tell you, this is a, a perfect example. It's the it's the one, the new construction, a chimney vent to death is what Jack calls it. And describe what I'm looking at and everybody else that's looking at. What are we looking at here? It doesn't look good. Well, this was this was new construction. Uh, people uh, had hired me to come out there having a little bit of trouble with the the builder. And when I went up in the attic, uh, the chimney flue that you're seeing there, the the shiny uh, silver duct is from their fireplace no and no. it's yes. uh, no. supposed to go through the roof and uh, out through a chimney with a little rain cap on top and this stopped in the attic right at the roof sheeting and if, i mean as soon as you turn this on there's going to be a fire uh, pretty much was this masonry the, no it was a, a prefab but it was a wood burning fireplace oh. and uh, this this was during the the warm months but they were ready to have a wood fire come fall, mm. and it would have burned the house down. The house would have burned down. There would have been a fire immediately. Because, immediately. I mean, the sparks that come up, I mean, you know, but it's going to catch this fire. Would been, this would have been a disaster. Here's a, here, here's a perfect example of why you need to do a home inspection even on a new construction. I mean, folks, this house had not even been lived in. I mean, they had just set this in place and i mean from a liability standpoint i mean if i was a builder i I'll just be honest I, if i was a builder my dad built homes for a long time but if i was a builder i would want for someone to give me a check off and have you know if, if you're a, i mean that that could do you do home inspections for builders by chance because i think that's a missed opportunity i i have done uh, a few uh I was doing a new construction, and the builder came by and kind of started off uh, on a rocky start. And then I pointed out some of the things I found, and he mm -hmm. recognized that, uh, well, maybe I was right, and maybe he did have an error. Mm -hmm. Well, he has since hired me four different times on new homes before he turns them over. Oh. He wants me to go through them. Oh, that's brilliant. And, and, you know, you could actually, if you think about it, if you are a builder out there, what better safety net than to have a home inspector like Jack to go before you give those keys to the new homeowner, which the last thing as a builder that you would want to have happen is to give uh, keys to a new home and then literally have it go up in flames. I mean, you didn't... Well, the liability. The liability. Aspect. And this may only be one in a thousand. Do you think? I don't, I don't know. Well, would you <laughs> want it to be your one? Yeah, <laughs> that, and that's, that's exactly right. And that's... We were talking off air about... You know, having a home inspector 
you know, come out and do a home inspection because maybe they're cheaper, but they may only have, you know, a month of experience. Well, that's fine if you want to give that opportunity, but do you want it to be at a risk of missing something so very important that 20 years of ex- 25 years of experience? How long have you been home inspecting? Uh, since 1989. Okay. So it's 23, 20, 20, 23 years. Yes. So, well, let me ask you, Jack, would people that are living in homes now, they're not selling, they're not buying, they've been in the home for five, 10 years, would you recommend, if they've never had a home inspection, would you recommend one now? Absolutely. Uh, one of the, the parts of the market that I inspect for are people that have, uh, well, one, going through a divorce and uh, the lady is now inheriting the home. She has no idea what's going on. Or the man's inheriting it. Or the man yeah. inheriting okay. it. Um, the other is that someone that's just lived in the house 15 years mm-hmm. and they've never crawled under. They have mm-hmm. no idea what's going on under their house or up in their attic. Mm-hmm. Um, that sounds like a recipe for a top 10 list. <laughs> it, 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 well, the, there there's some photos that probably <laughs> apply to those homes, yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean of the home inspection pictures. Yes. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, we got to move down the list because we're only on number nine and we have many more to go. This one is crazy. This is gross. N- number eight. Okay. So number eight, you can see it right there. It's it's labeled fungus for all of us in crawl space. Fungus for all of us. Yes, <laughs> fungus for all of us. And when I first initially looked at this, I thought maybe you know it had snowed and some snow had come it looks you know, like into that. the. That's what it looks like. But what it actually is is fungus growing around. It appears the something. crawl space floor, and is that middle piece something that precipitated this growth, or is that just? some object that's there talk about what we're looking at here well this this was a a a pretty nasty crawl space and that's a chunk of wood okay just left there during construction Mm -hmm. and for whatever reason this fungus started growing and that is a huge chunk of fungus growing (laughs) that probably actually has a heartbeat it probably does (laughs) and you know and the other looks like the blob (laughs) yes it's like you could see a man coming out of that and creating something but but could you make snowballs with this i you know i didn't try (laughs) (laughs) you need a hazrat suit to do that now jack for somebody who does have, and in all seriousness, if if somebody does see fungus in their crawl space or even in their um, finished basement space, for instance, it may be a smaller amount, but it's very dangerous, is it not? Potentially, yes. Yeah. I mean, they need to have it, and you can't just go down there with Clorox wipes. That's probably not going to do the trick, that's, correct? That's not a good idea. And And you talked on the last show about... You do have some referral sources for people that can do mold testing and help with remedies and things of that nature as well. So, I mean, in all seriousness, a, a solution, you have some partners in, in your strategic alliance that you can help uh, direct them to the right person. Absolutely, I can. Okay. Mark, did you have a question about this? No, I was going to see what our next photo is. Okay, so Mark is moving me along. That's what a good co-host does. <laughs> so, number seven, that is correct, number seven, we have... yes. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Number seven. It. it, it <laughs> I don't even understand how somebody could do this, but Jack, you labeled it appropriately crazy, and it is a socket for those of you that are looking at it. It's or not looking at it. It's a socket with with wires literally just stuck into each of the sockets to to get electric charge. I suppose. Tell me what we're looking at. Well, there's uh, this is a an outlet that's on the outside of a house, mm-hmm. so. It should have a weatherproof cover, but it doesn't. It's supposed to be GFI protected or ground fault circuit interrupter protected, and it's not. Mm-hmm. And they needed to power some pool equipment. Oh, no, man. So they <laughs> just took a piece of Romex and bared off the ends and stuck them in there. And you notice that there's only two prongs, so they only use the hot and the neutral. There's no ground. It's not GFI protected, and it's going to swimming pool equipment. Oh, man. I mean, if water were to hit that, then you would you would immediately have a spark of some kind, correct? You, you probably would, and it it um, you could have a shock danger at the pool. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, hopefully, it would trip the breaker. But if it had a Federal Pacific panel, yeah, it and may an not. Aluminum wiring, you and got aluminum, yeah, arc so, welder back there. So this is this is just crazy that someone would do that. 
Now was never mind. I was gonna say, was this the homeowner that did this, or was it? Yes. Yeah, it was the homeowner who did this. Oh yeah, I wasn't thinking like electrician would do something. Jack like is that. here to protect us from ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and there's a couple of them towards the end that you guys will not believe. Um, and then also, you know, being electrocuted is a big deal. You will die from that. And to boot, you put it next to a pool. That is all kinds of stupid. And, you know, you can't fix stupid sometimes, as Ron White says. But in this situation, you know, you have to just simply laugh and just say, what were they thinking? You know? That's exactly what I think many times a day. I'm almost speechless, honestly. Okay, so let's move down the list here. We've got number six. Number six is... You know, I, I, I hate to say this, but I actually wasn't all that surprised at this particular one because they have what appears to be a car jack and it is holding up the house, at least a part of it. What is happening here? Well, you hit the nail on the head. It, it is a car jack and they're holding up a part of the house with it. Right. Uh, I'm guessing they had some, some floor squeaks or some floor sagging and they went under there and put some blocks of wood and a and a wedge of wood in a car jack and put it in there. That is unbelievable because, you know, sometimes, and it appears that the reason that they did this uh, maybe was because, well, I don't know, to be honest, but it, there, was, there was a sagging. That's awesome. probably what it was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's the thing. People that are in certain maybe rural areas, they may have a sag. This may be a normal, I mean, I, this may be a standard practice here. This, you know, have sagging. Will go down and go out and get in the Volvo and get your jack out. And and frankly, it may solve the issue temporarily for them. But you know, on any good car jack, you turn it one way, it's coming down. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, this thing is is obviously this well, is well. They not, make they make the proper equipment for this that jacks it up, and then you yeah. spot weld it to seal it permanently. This you, is what? not. What did you just say? They, they he used, knows how to do it. Yeah. He's out there doing well, this. Well, we've type. had to have these on some houses. I'm you've had to have business. car jacks? No, did they have uh They do have. They you're have right. Jacks. Real that, jacks. Real jacks that will support the floors and then you spot weld it so it can never come down. Right. Like you're describing. Exactly. Well, the real Jack Feldman would <laughs> would, would, would would argue in some of these pictures. But no, I agree with you absolutely. So that's just that's just all kinds of crazy. And and we we have about probably two and a half minutes or so left in this segment. So we're we're gonna finish one more, talk briefly about it. And then on the other side of the break we'll continue down the list. Yes. We'll we'll probably have about four left. But the next one the next one on our list and we only have about two minutes, so we'll start on this one and then we'll continue on. It's labeled gas water heater. Oops, forgot to install flu. I mean, now, now talk me through what's going on here. Well, they, they either, uh, well, they, they changed out a gas water heater in an attic. Which doesn't sound, that sounds like an oxymoron, but. Well, there, there, there was a pan under it and it drains and it, it, it's okay. It, it's not the greatest idea that in my mind, but it's, it's approved. You can do that. Mm-hmm. However. They took out that pesky flu that takes all the exhaust gases out through the roof, <laughs> and they decided they just didn't need that anymore. Right. So when the gas uh, heater goes on, the flame goes in, and the exhaust comes out the top, but instead of going out through the roof, through the flu, it's just going into the attic and making its way down into um, the house. Well, as long as the kids don't go into the attic, don't you think that they'll be... I'm kidding, Jack. I yeah. mean, really, and and we we just in the closing seg- seconds but, but here. Check of out this the segment, welding. The welding. That's what it looks I was, like. They were going to ignite the wood. Well, that's my question: is that when this thing goes on, and I don't need you to answer right now because when we come on the other side of the break, but it almost appears that the individual who installed this actually welded it directly <laughs> onto the wood or inside the wood. I'm not sure what was happening, but we will tackle a little bit more of that, and then we will go through the last five. Um, Thank you so much for joining us here on The Housing Hour, presented by Mortgage Investors Group. Follow us online, thehousinghour.com. You can follow us on Twitter, The Housing Hour, at The Housing Hour. And we'll be right back after these messages. Loves Jesus in America, too. She's a good girl. Hi, I'm Dawn Steimer. You've heard me talk about Master Custom Home Remodeling. Now I'd like to talk to you about Master Home Medic for your smaller project needs. 
We've hired a craftsman that has 30 years of experience. Along with your honeydew list, we can actually fix a foggy window. That's right, a foggy window. When's the last time you heard of a window repair specialist? You can call Master Home Medic at 458-0416 or online at masterhomemedic.com. 60, 90 days, that's a little bit too long. This is Halloran for Mortgage Investors Group. They're great. They started in 1989. It was seven people, and they said, you know what? If we're going to build something that will grow, that will have a good, solid foundation, it's got to be the right thing. you got to do the right thing. You've got to have the right people. you got to have the right product, right price. Got to do it the right way. That was the foundation. Now it's 2012. They've served over 60,000 customers, $9 billion worth of American dreams processed. They're pretty incredible. Now here's one of the things they've noticed in the industry. It's taking 60 to 90 days to close a loan. Shouldn't do that. They can get it done for you in 30 days or less. Their website is easy to remember. It's just migonline.com, migonline.com. You can go there this morning. Equal housing lender. Mortgage license number 109111. Take it from me, Jeff Jacoby. Valentine's Day is a big deal. And whether you've been married 50 years or you've been dating just five weeks, a perfect Valentine's Day can make a lasting impression. That's why I suggest you take that special lady to one of the Copper Cellar family of restaurants, Calhoun's Copper Cellar Chesapeake's or Smoky Mountain Brewery. If you want romance, it's hard to beat Copper Cellar. Soft lighting and a great steak. Chesapeake's features the same warm atmosphere along with seafood so fresh, you'll think you're at the beach. And if you want something a little more relaxed, Calhoun's is the perfect choice. Complete with award-winning ribs and pulled pork barbecue. And if that relationship is just getting started and you want to keep it light, a microbrew and a burger at Smoky Mountain Brewery is the perfect way to get the spark started. Copper Cellar, Chesapeake's, Calhoun's, and Smoky Mountain Brewery are all a can't-miss choice. Call now for Valentine's reservations and make sure this is a date she'll never forget. The Copper Cellar family of restaurants, eat local, eat good. Spring is just around the corner. Temperature begins to warm. Plants start to bloom. And truthfully, what's more fun than planting a garden with your family and letting your kids pick out the flowers? Mortgage Investors Group wants to help you make these precious memories come true for you. Whether it's a purchase or a refinance, we have the loan to fit your needs. So call us today, 800-489-8910, or visit us online at mortgageinvestorsgroup.com. Mortgage Investors Group, your home loan solution for the past 23 years. Tennessee Mortgage License Number 109111. Are any of those work-from-home opportunities for real? I have to tell you, it's the best decision that I ever made because we replaced my income and my husband's income. This business has allowed us to quit our jobs and we're both at home full time and loving it. Best decision I ever made. Check out growyourincome.com. You'll find they've been helping our listeners to start their own home businesses for nearly 10 years. They're A-plus rated and affiliated with a multi-billion dollar company doing business in over 80 countries. So what's your dream? A part-time home business to pay off bills and take vacations? Or a fun, full-time home business so you can quit your boring job? No matter your age, education, or experience, you can literally earn money on your computer from your kitchen table. No selling soap, no cold calling, no pressure. They want you, and they're giving away $1,000 to someone just for checking them out. Visit GrowYourIncome.com. GrowYourIncome.com. That's GrowYourIncome.com. For today, look for mostly sunny, a beautiful day at 55. Tonight, increasing clouds at 36. Rain showers develop by Sunday evening. From the VLT Local 8 Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist David Aldrich. Best political coverage. Best newscast. Best enterprise. Best overall radio news. Eight awards for news excellence by the Tennessee Associated Press. News Talk 98.7. WOKI. The Housing Hour with Kevin Ray continues, helping you understand what is really going on out there and what to do about it. Again, Kevin Ray. Welcome back into the Housing Hour. This is Kevin Ray, your host, and I'm here with Mark Griffith, our co-host. And we want to direct you to thehousinghour.com. Great site for you. We have a treasure trove of information there waiting for you to dig in and learn. That's the house. Investigate all things housing. Um, we are so proud of what has been developed. And Mark has done a tremendous job developing this site. 
And, you know, it's amazing. We had the Java Breach um, uh, show a couple of few weeks ago. And if you Google Java Breach, yes. we're like in the number one thing yes. that pops up. We are the one, number yeah. one thing. Now, on Chrome, I noticed we were like number three okay. if you use Chrome. But it's still Google, which that's a whole other show. But it is amazing because – and that tells me that we have the keywords. People are looking at it. We have the traffic. So home inspections is one of those things that have a high traffic as well. And we're going to get to back to Jack in just a minute and finish our top five or finish with the five remaining ridiculous uh, pictures from home inspections. Before we do that, I do need to tell you also about another company, one of our sponsors we're so proud of and thankful for that has transitioned over here to WOKI with us, and that is – uh, Bobby Lopez, who came in, um, in Capital Financial Group. And you heard him with our, our initial show was about home ownership matters. And we're talking about financial goals. And that's what he does. He helps you to identify the goals that you have in your life as far as financial things and help you develop a plan to best meet those goals. He's going to help you build a strategy. He's going to help you design a system approach, look at your budget, how are you spending money, and then he might add some stuff, he might modify some stuff, and he might delete some things, whatever he's got to do to help you meet your goals. That's what he's going to do, and that's what they do, and I am so thankful that they're business partners and they're in our strategic alliance is what he, I got that from him, I believe, Um, but it wasn't original, but it's just an incredible company. Give them a call. It's Capital Financial Group, 865-246-1680. All right, so we're down to the last five. We we are going to hit number five, which I mean, it is it, it is absolutely ridiculous. This is moronic, moronic, um, just insane. I would. There's many different things I could use to describe this, but this is how Jack describes it. I guess these are Jack's words or your words. Uh, these are Jack. These are Jack's words. Okay. So, um, and you can see number five. What's so funny? <laughs> I actually wrote some of this. You did? Okay. <laughs> so. Well, some of this is is a kind of an in between. But yeah. one of the worst examples of homeowner electrical work that I have ever seen: open outlet and wiring attached to a metal downspout. Just crazy dangerous. And I would add to the just crazy dangerous with all kinds of stupid. Oh. I mean, guys. TheHousingHour.com, if you're not following along, if you're just tuning in, you can go to TheHousingHour.com. We're looking at the mo- the top 10 most ridiculous pictures found by a home inspector, Jack Feldman with Clayton Inspection Service. He is our guest today, and we're at number five. And if you'll look on that page, TheHousingHour.com, and scroll down to number five, you'll see what we're looking at. And it is a downspout, so explain what you're looking at, Jack. Well, it's a metal downspout, and there's a... Um a piece of Romex wiring that's wrapped around it and then uh, a kind of a homemade little outlet to an, another extension cord. And there's a, a light bulb that's uh, spliced into the wiring on the side. And then on the other side of the downspout attached is a plastic junction box with another outlet with an extension cord going to it. And it's all open out in the weather and uh, the Romex was frayed, and it, it's just an electrocution waiting to happen. Well, and I and I want to laugh at some of these things, but I mean, it's, it's so, <laughs> it's it's so dangerous. I mean, you know, I've got I've got a, a five year old little boy, you know, and and well, that's potentially a harmful thing if you had children. They might not know that you don't touch that. You know, they might go over there and think it's a swing or something. You know, we just don't know. Um, but I'm surprised they actually use the junction. What would you call it? The a junction box. I know, that's a basic term. Don't laugh. I don't always know these things. But I'm surprised they actually use that. And, it, you know, they could have simply attached the metal on metal, I suppose. But And they did because the screw has to go into the metal at some level. That's right. But this maybe keeps some of the elements off it. What, what could they have been thinking here? I mean, why not just, I mean, what would been what would have been the way to do this? I mean, correctly, you would have attached it to the house and done all the proper things? It, well, just like I said, it's just crazy dangerous. Mm-hmm. The, the proper way to do it would have had conduit out to a uh, exterior rated junction box with a weatherproof cover with an outlet in it and... <laughs> okay. Uh, he skipped all the, the no. proper wiring. There, there is nothing about this that's even close to being <laughs> uh, right. It, it, is this not ground faulted? Uh, no. Oh, it's no. not. Okay, it, it, there, it's not right. Well, if there was water on this, and th- 
somebody were to touch and it's something. a downspout, so there's going to be water coming yeah. down. There's, exactly. there's water flowing. Let's through move. It. Let's move on. This almost disgusts me. But anyway, so the next one is, I mean, really just crazy. Um, it's number four, number four on the list. So you can come down with us and follow. Number four, um, and I'm going to read vent pipe for a gas furnace located in the crawl space that was disconnected. This can allow, this particular should allow all of the exhaust gases and carbon monoxide to enter the living space above. So the plan is, the picture is meant, the, the, the thing that you're looking at is meant to direct this carbon monoxide and exhaust gases outside the house. But there's, but there's about, what, four or five inches missing? Yes. Um, the, and, and I put that little, little uh, orange tape on there, right? I identify some things in crawl spaces mm-hmm. for the the person coming behind me to fix it to find it. Oh yeah, as if that would be hard to find. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you'd be surprised. I know. I know. Um, so you think that just pulled apart? It it accident? did. That's that's an elbow, and it it probably came apart when they were installing oh, okay. it. Okay. And whoever is installing it, it was late in the day, maybe you know beer thirty or something, and and, <laughs> and they just didn't want to bother and and yeah. so they left it the way it is um it it didn't just happen that way it it fell apart when they were installing it so someone was there and saw it apart and okay. left it so number one because i know this from a personal experience and i won't go into great detail but oh, yeah. i had carbon monoxide poisoning when i was about 12 years old and it was a the long story short, I had 23% in my blood. And the, they said, we're not sure how he survived. My mom had about 30%. There was she brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that's why I'm so smart, they said. Oh, no, I'm kidding. But, but my, my mom actually went into cardiac arrest as a result of this. Is this? I remember yes, this. Yes. And she was. So, I mean, suffice it to say that it's very, carbon monoxide is deadly. Deadly. Very deadly. And we're talking about a furnace that's now carbon monoxide. Is that what is being pumped through here? Well, it's or, the exhaust gases from which the gas has and car- has carbon monoxide in it, yes. Okay. So, I mean, obviously that four inches, you know, is not sufficient, to say the least. I mean, so so these people potentially were damaged in some way, carbon monoxide. Well, they were wondering why they were always sleepy. Probably. And ah, that is- and it speaks to having proper uh, warning system inside the house. Uh, a car- carbon monoxide uh, smoke Absolutely. detector would really be part of any house. Uh, and, and, and the show that I was not here, you talked to the fire marshal yes, about we, that, the Knox County Fire Code. Right, fire prevention. Yep. That's on our uh, Protect Your Family so series. the Protect Your Family series on the housinghour.com, you can learn about why that is the most important piece of, because it's, it's, it's an invisible gas. It's an invisible gas. So that's one of the big reasons why you need to make sure that you have that tested for um, and make sure that you are adequately covered. I mean, and, and some things too, Jack, that you can just go down in the your crawl space, you know, and hey, just do a, you know, walk through or a crawl through. And is there anything jumping out? If you don't want to do that, great time while you're getting ready to get into the spring you're doing your spring cleaning and things like that and I, i'm i'm certainly like jack a lot and i'm not here to you know i'm not like doing an, uh, an advertisement for him but i'm doing something because we want you guys to be safe that's why we do this and and what better person to do it than jack feldman at clayton inspection service because they'll take care of it and look at hey what's going on in here what do we need to fix if anything that could could injure or potentially kill my family members. I mean, literally. So, now, we're down to the last two, correct? Yeah, we're on number three. Oh, number three. Yeah. Number three. Yes, you are correct. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. The next one is a chimney without a proper cap. Now, I'm going to let you explain this because when I look at it, yeah, it looks crazy. But tell me why this is crazy. so crazy. Well, it's uh, a prefabricated uh, fireplace. It has the metal flue coming up and has a proper rain cap and a spark arrestor. And then there's a, a wood uh, chimney enclosure. So when you drive by the house, it looks nice. But there's a big void there where there should be a metal cap to keep mm-hmm. rain from going down into the attic, into the ceiling, into the house. Oh. Mold. Along yeah, we're with, talking along with squirrels and birds and all. Yeah. squirrels, birds, you know. Yeah. Well, because you got mold potential, cat. water damage, um, all kinds of craziness. Yeah. They, they just 
forgot they the installed cap. it and forgot the cap or didn't want to pay for it. Okay, so we're, we're that, that's crazy. I mean, it, in with the hail damage that we had in June of two thousand nine or whenever it was, um, this is some things that could potentially have happened. Um, whenever, yeah, whenever that hail, it was a huge hailstorm. Um, but these are things that could happen. And if you had your roof replaced, there also could be some other hazards. Tell them real quick about that. With the with the roof, there's uh, vent flashings, chimney crowns, chimney caps. Uh, there's a, a lot of damage that could have happened from the, the hail besides the shingles. So call call somebody about that. Jack could be the person to help you take care of that. So number two, we're going to quickly, we have about four minutes left. So number two is termite mud tubes. Look at this. Go to thehousinghower.com. Send your friends and family. This is not okay. <laughs> this is not okay. What this is my looking at? Well, it, you're looking at a uh, a crawl space that, that no one has been in for a, Ever. a, a long time. <laughs> Uh, there, there's standing water, uh, pipes aren't supported properly, it, but these, these little things that look like uh, tinsel on a Christmas tree are actually termite tubes. Unbelievable. Are you saying that was hanging down from the ceiling? Yes. Are termite Th- tubes? Those are, those are termite tubes hanging <gasps> down from the, the never... wood joists. Uh, they're, they're, oh, well, at least they weren't on support stru- Oh, the wood joist. <laughs> the, that is the that's support your floor. Yeah. That's your floor system. Yeah. And they're, they're just all over. And you can see the floor insulation's been wet. And it's, uh, it, it's, ins- it's upside down, first mm-hmm. of all. The insulation's upside down. And then it's hanging because it's wet under there and the termites. It's just... Uh, so that, somebody installed the, um, they installed the insulation upside down? Yes. The, uh, okay. All right. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Well, they yeah, install so the it upside down right. because they get to touch the paper and they don't get itchy by touching the fiberglass. Oh, those poor things. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, look it for yourself, folks. You know, termite tubes are pretty identifiable and they will cause major structural damage to your home if not treated immediately and taken care of. And you can protect yourself by calling a inspector, a pest inspector. I mean, to help you to identify these. So that, uh, that is just remarkable. Um, now what are we, we're at number one. Yeah, this which, is the last one. And, and, um, which one of these doozies are we going to hit for number one? Cause I have a couple. Yeah, of this one is, describe this picture for us. Well, it's, it's an engineered floor, uh, truss oh. and, uh, a plumber uh, had to install a toilet and this it, wasn't a plumber. It, the plumber did this. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. yeah, this was a plumber. And so they had to install a toilet and it just happened to lie uh, right where the floor truss was. So they cut through the top of the, <laughs> the floor truss and those pesky little uh, side supports for the trusses that were engineered products, they got in the way too. So he cut those out. Yeah, they're called webbing. Right. Yeah. But also, he didn't quite install the toilet right because you see the stains around it where the yeah. wax ring is leaked. So... We have a, a leaky wax ring around a toilet damaging the subfloor, but you have an engineered truss that's been cut through, um, and you, you just can't cut through or modify engineered trusses because... Unless you use the car jack that we saw in the right. picture because you're well, going to need it. You can use the car jack. Now, could this have been a situation where the plumber came to the homeowner and said, okay, I'm just going to tell you right now, this is going to cost you about $350 to engineer this new product down a little bit and maybe they're trying to cut corners somebody was cutting corners that's the bottom line yes that's the bottom line i asked crazy you can go to the housing hour and check that out for yourself and we're coming to the end of our show the top 10 most ridiculous pictures we want to thank jack feldman with clayton inspection service for coming in here and sharing these with us and you can also you know the housinghour.com is a great resource for you as we've been talking about the whole, whole show you can also go to migonline.com for Mark and I services, and you can apply online. You can find the loan officer nearest you. We have offices from Memphis all the way up to Johnson City, Kingsport, and all in between. We're here to serve your needs, whether that be housing or protecting your family. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week right here on WOKI. That's the Housing Hour with Kevin Ray for today. Join Kevin and his guests each week at this time to keep up with the why and the why not. You need to know, so come here to find out. This program is presented by Mortgage Investors Group.